remember. So I would be honored to become a captain someday. As long as you're willing to do the work, you have my promise. I'll do everything in my power to see that it happens. Thank you. Come. Let me introduce you to the crew. Ooh. <clears throat> Everyone, if I could have your attention for a moment, I'd like to introduce Commander Jara Rydak, our new first officer. Some quick introductions. This is Lieutenant Handar, our helmsman, one of the best in the business. One of? What he lacks in humility, he more than makes up for in ability. A pleasure to meet you, Commander. Likewise. Next, we have Commander Westbrook, our Chief Science Officer. I've come to rely on his expert counsel on a regular basis. Pleasure. Commander Rydak, it is such an honor to meet you. This is our tactical officer, Lieutenant Bedrosian. We've been looking forward to meeting you for about as long as I can remember. I've been following your career for quite some time. And I look forward to learning as much as I can from you. That's very kind of you to say. I'm happy to be here. Well, I have to admit, one of the reasons I've followed your career is because you're part Kobliat, because of what you've overcome. Starfleet stands up for people who can't defend themselves. And you were one of those people once. But since then, you've done so much to protect others who need it. I really admire that. So, you've been something of an inspiration to me. Not that I've done anything close to what you've done, but you definitely set a standard to strive for. <laughs> I don't know what to say. That's incredibly flattering. Thank you. I hope someday I can follow in your footsteps. I'm sure you will. And then, of course, you've already met Commander Ermont. Please do everything you can to make Commander Rydek feel at home here. I'll be on the Starbase, have an urgent meeting with the Starbase commander to get our authorization to get underway. If they drag their feet any longer, we won't make our rendezvous. The bridge is yours. Commander, Chief Engineer Chovak needs to lower the structural integrity field. He sent a crew out to recalibrate the emitters in response to the danger posed by the storm. We just need your go-ahead. Permission granted. Lowering structural integrity field now. Entering maintenance mode. Condition blue. The storm is getting worse. Looks like they turned off the Sith. Great. Let's get to that emitter. scars on her it adds character when i joined starfleet all i wanted was a ride out of town hello welcome in to star but trek this isn't exactly how i pictured it on the outside of the ship is not surgeons 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 we don't know what part of the machinery don't you want more than that i mean starfleet is noble and all but it's still a machine a massive, massive machine. Yeah, of course I do. Starfleet's an open door. We just have to walk through it. You wanted to get away. I enlisted because I didn't want to wait years just to get out of this house. 
Wir haben sehr viel geredet, weil das dreht ich nicht so viel. Weil es Englisch ist, auf Deutsch gibt es das noch nicht, glaube ich. Ich habe es noch nicht gesehen. Und äh, wenn die deutsche Version kommt, also Update kommt, dann schwer die deutsche Version weiter. Und dann weiter. Wir können vielleicht das zu verstehen, was sie sagen und sowas. Alles so geht es auch als Englisch, das kann ja jeder verstehen eigentlich. Aber das ist richtig so viel. Diaz, der Commander Chovak. Wir sind auf dem Siphometer. Acknowledged. Du kannst mit der Recalibration Recalibration. Careful. Too much action and harmonics will deflect the alignment. Commander Westbrook, right? Chief Science Officer. You remembered my name and my rank. Impressive. Yes, I am the Chief Science Officer, and I have the dubious honor of being the most senior officer on this bridge. I know this ship inside and out. Better than just about anyone. What a very impressive list of credentials. This is a research and discovery ship, first and foremost. Now with a former tactical officer as its new first officer. I'm curious though, a Kobliad, or half in your case, is an odd choice for first officer, given your vulnerable condition and all. But if, as an example, we found ourselves in a hostile situation, and you were suddenly incapacitated because you needed an infusion, what would happen then? leave Captain Solano without an XO. Granted, that would be a worst-case scenario. But not outside the realm of possibility. Captain Solano's familiar with my condition. I'm sure it factored into his decision. So I'd have to say it's not a problem. But we should probably have a contingency plan just in case. Listen, can I be blunt, Commander? I see no reason to stop now. Commander Sutherland, your predecessor, was one of the best first officers in all of Starfleet. His record was impeccable and his reputation was without equal. I mean no disrespect, but the shoes you're stepping into are almost impossible to fill. He was loved by the crew. And he was one of my closest friends. So I can only hope that you'll live up to expectations. Mr. Westbrook. If you have some kind of problem with me, and you just met me so it has nothing to do with me, you're gonna have to figure out how to get over it. Because I'm here, and I'm not going anywhere. Do you read me? Loud and clear. I'll stick to science. That is what this ship is for. Very well. Seeing as Captain Solano is on the Starbase, let me give you an update on this ion storm we're flying into. It's unusual, unlike anything I've ever seen. At the moment, I can't tell you if the Resolute will shrug it off or if we're putting ourselves at risk. However, if we learn more about its patterns, its nature, we can come up with a scientific countermeasure. Just a moment. We've got a massive energy wave inbound, on screen. Tracing its trajectory. Starbase docking clamps are holding. The storm's emissions are fluctuating, coming in waves. And if my projections are right, we're about to get hit by a wideband burst of ionic energy, like a tsunami. I'm reading power abnormalities all over the ship. Estimated time to impact, two minutes. Red alert. Aye.
Evacuating main gangway and retracting. Putting sensor visualization on screen. With the structural integrity field shut down, we can't take a direct hit. Time to impact. One minute. Shield systems are severely impacted. We have limited protection. I need every available solution. What are our options? We can weaken the impact of the storm with a deflector pulse. There's a better way. I'm sending all auxiliary power to the deflector dish. Send the aux power to the shield. We can't reactivate the entire shield bubble, but it's a directional threat. So we can orient all we have towards the wave. You have to believe me. We only get one shot at this. We can't afford to get it wrong. That's right, which is why we need to send power to our shield. Commander Westbrook, use the deflector dish. Already working on it. Optimal timing displayed. It's going to be tight. Good. Send the pulse on my command. Now. No, that was too early. We're... Commander Westbrook, use the deflector dish. Already working on it. Optimal time eh? displayed. It's going to be tight. Good. Send the pulse on my command. Now. We got it. This is it. All hands, brace for impact. supercharge the plasma forcing it to back flush through the system okay. and creating a dangerous imbalance and you blow out every primary system on the ship just tell us what you need us i need you to traverse the hull to the access port to recalibrate the port nacelle plasma regulator we've reached the first access point understood do you see the override for the level one fail safe circuits Affirmative. Engage the override. It should allow us to stop the EPS flow to the warp engine without triggering an automatic core shutdown. Failsafe override engaged. Are you sure? I am registering some crosstalk in the bypass circuit. We need to route the signals so they don't interfere with each other. Dears to Resolute, the fail safes are temporarily disabled. Moving on to the EPS regulator. Eh? Heads up, Carter. What is that? What if the discharge is coalesced? It's coming right toward us. I'm gonna try to disrupt it with my phaser. Uh. Yeah. 
Still took most of it. Just snuck up on me. That damaged your suit. Energy dampening is down to 60%. <laughs> Ja, ich darf lachen. Kann ich schießen. Okay, mit eins, ne? So we gotta climb up the pylon. Not that there's really an up, but you know. Krater machen, ne? Are you all right? Yeah. Suit took most of it. Just snuck up on me. That damaged your suit. Energy dampening is down to 60%. We're almost to the regulator. Man kann schießen, verdammt. We're at the regulator. Opening the access panel. I am now halting the EPS flow to the port nacelle. We have little time before it causes an overload in the engine. You must work efficiently. Jens, efficient. Lines to the port warp engine are back in balance. Almost done. Once I cycle the manifold nozzles, Chobuck can. Mm. We've got a lot of debris coming down. All vibrations, too. We can't finish the EPS regulation in these conditions. Please advise. We have to release the ship from that other docking clamp or the hull will be ripped apart. There's a problem. 
The clamps are supposed to disengage automatically in an emergency, but it's not working. Not working? What are our options? The docking clamps are fitted with exploding bolts for an emergency release. We've got crew out there. That'd be like setting off a bomb next to them. Maybe there's another way. Starbase is hailing us. Put them through. Resolute, the remaining mooring arm is failing. You need to disengage from the Starbase now. The damage to the station will be catastrophic. The docking clamp isn't functioning. We're exploring our options. The option is to detonate the emergency release. Commander, hear me out. Reverse the polarity of the hull, which theoretically will repel the docking clamps. And repel the engineering crew right off the hull into the storm. This is Captain Solano. Put me on screen. Go ahead. Captain, we have a situation. Commander, what are you doing? Blow the bolts on the docking clamp. The captain doesn't know the whole story. I'm giving you an order. Chara? Captain, you brought me here because you trusted me. Can you trust me now? You better be sure you make the right decision. The captain made himself quite clear. They're gonna get hammered with debris out there. Reverse the polarity. There is protocol. And there are lives. What is the holdup? Our base, stand by. We're gonna flip hull polarity to disengage the clamps. Yes, Commander. Repair crew, this is acting Captain Jara Ryder. Be advised, we are going to reverse hull polarity to free us from the remaining docking clamp. Tether yourself and deactivate your boots on my mark. Understood. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Mark! We are moments from primary system failure. I got it. Oh man, das stresse ich hier ist zwischendurch. Edsilar there to access the interior. Roger that. Go in there now. I'm at the auxiliary hatch.
You go first. What? Let me save your neck this time. No time to fight me on this. You better be right behind me. <laughs> They're safe. Bringing the Sith fully online. Do it. Here, let me help you. We've got one wounded at my location. Millie. Oh, man. See you at sick bay. Status report. A repair crew made it inside. EPS flow is back to nominal levels. The SIF is back up. How does this affect mission readiness, Mr. Ermat? Releasing the docking clamps using hull polarity minimized damage to the Resolute. We'll have some last-minute repairs to make, but if we reapportion some of the staff, we can make our departure on time. As of now, however, we are successfully moored to the station. Good to hear. Send updates to my ready room. Commander Rydek, with me. Weil es aber auf mich ist. You disobeyed my orders. Well? I shouldn't have gone against your orders, sir. You can't unring that bell. Especially when you do it, not just in front of the bridge crew, but while I was in front of the Starbase staff. That's going to get around. My name's already tarnished around the fleet. But what is it going to do to my credibility on this ship? From the top to the bottom. Bridge to lower decks. I understand, sir. It won't happen again. I should hope not. You might have won some fans on the bridge with that stunt, but not everyone. Lieutenant Commander Chovak has already bent my ear. I'm sure he doesn't take it personally. He'll get over it in time. Mr. Chovak is more complicated than he would want to admit. I guess we all are. And... If I'm being honest, I'm not sure what I would have done in the moment either. You never really know if you weren't in those shoes. So... Just boil it down to you did what you had to. That'll have to be good enough for me. You placed a lot of trust in me, bringing me here. I feel like I've let you down. I brought you here for a reason. I'm still sure it was the right one. Despite it all, we got our final Starfleet clearance to depart. So if you'll fetch Mr. Ermot, Knock out the final details of any 
outstanding repairs, and then we'll set out for Hotari. Yes, sir. Well, eins machen eigentlich, nicht zwei. Oh, naja, egal. <laughs> Also, was ich frage, das ist ein großes Schiff. Was? <lacht> All Departments reporting full mission readiness. We've got our full complement on board. This is my favorite moment, right now. The start of a new mission is always full of possibility. The Orion Syndicate sells as a drug. <lacht> Don't let the Admiralty hear you say that. Besten Admiral. Captain on the bridge. Sit. Sit, everyone. You all know, I'm not big on speeches. We're embarking on the first mission since our refit. Let's make it a good one. Disengage docking clamps. Ah, oh, viel mehr los, was? Docking clamps released. Rusters ahead, Mr. Handar. Thank you. I'm fine. Really, I... Uh... You don't look fine. I have to get to sickbay. Go. Ja, die fällt was, ne? Sie braucht. Genau, was sie, äh, sie braucht. Well, that was quite a scare. A few minutes more and it would have been one of the shortest tenues on record for a first officer. Is that... The engineer that was out on the hull? That storm did a real number on her, but she'll live. Just needs rest. You should worry about yourself. Your deridium levels got dangerously low and destabilized your cell structure. This is definitely one of the more memorable first days I can think of. <laughs> My name is Dr. Aram Duval, Chief Medical Officer. To be honest, I've never met a Kobliad before. You're rare. I know. I was going to say special. Your people's numbers have dwindled, despite the Federation's efforts to find a more readily available alternative to the Duridium you need to survive. Yet you joined Starfleet and managed to thrive. I imagine the responsibility must be overwhelming. Maybe even a burden at times. I know what it means. 
and I know the responsibility that comes with it. But I can't be anything more than who I am. And if someone has a problem with that or expects something else, then that's their problem, not mine. That's exactly right. And don't worry, I won't treat you like a science experiment. I just do the science and leave the experiments to Solano. You don't agree with his methods? I don't agree with his definition of acceptable risks. Not when the lives of your crew are at stake. My professional opinion is that the accident took a toll. More than he's willing to admit. He's overstressed, operating in the pressure cooker of his own mind. Which is never a good headspace when the lives of your crew are at stake. Mm. What concerns me is that now he's even further away from the thing he's been chasing his entire career. The breakthrough discovery. A major innovation. Something he can put his name on. Hmm. But the more the time passes and the further out of reach it gets, the more risk he'll be willing to take. People become blinded by their own ambition. I've seen it happen before. I hear you, but that's my job, isn't it? To make sure that doesn't happen. And we don't lose sight of the bigger picture. Which is exactly why I'm so glad you are here. We need you now more than ever. And I have to give you credit for what happened on the bridge. It took guts to defy a direct order. <laughs> huh. 